good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whatever you prefer, let me just fix this here, alright, so the name of this video is called Solipsism, the Singular Self. And for those who aren't familiar, solipsism is the belief or study that your mind or your self is the only thing that exists or can be known to exist. So in other words, solipsism is the individual or the, the belief that only there's only one mind, one individual, one singular self, and that self is all that there is. So I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to be talking about how it's an inevitable road that you will run into if you begin to start studying outside of your religions and into the esoteric doctrines. You will be led into solipsism, which we'll get into here. I'm going to let some people join on here. I'll ask everybody, if you don't mind, just dropping a share on this video and sharing this video with your friends and, and letting me be a voice on your platform. I, I'd appreciate that. If any of my messages or video speaks with you uh, or resonates with you, I'd, I'd love it if, if any of you guys could just share it. And that's greatly, greatly appreciated. So I posted a status yesterday about how it's fun to basically begin our journeys in conspiracy theories and to dabble into esoteric philosophies and studies and symbolism because when you're still very new to it, you don't see them for what they are. You think that you know what the symbols are showing you. And not only that, you think you know what philosophers like Alan Watts and these people are speaking about. But if you have yet to pierce the veil and see beyond your own veil from outside yourself, or your, your physical self, I should say, then I hate to say it, but you're still not even close to the inevitability of one, of solipsism, of hitting rock bottom. If you have seen Fight Club, if you have seen Fight Club, then you will resonate with this message very much so. But it's called hitting rock bottom, and you don't hit rock bottom until it finally hits you. that there's a conspiracy between what you call you and me. What I call you and what I call me is a great secret. There's a conspiracy behind it and between these two things appearing separate. And the more you pick at your illusion and the more you go further in your studies the more you begin to step out of the body and into the infinite amount of possibilities, not being limited to just a body, a human experience, a, a spirit. So, so what my message is with this video is that no matter where you are at in your journey of life, whether you think you're far ahead, far behind, it does not matter anywhere you are at. My point is, is that you will never be able to comprehend something beyond your current frequency. So, if the inside and outside are one and the same thing, and I'm trying to raise my awareness, then it's very simple that... How do I put this into words? I used the all-seeing eye as an example the other day. Someone who is still on a lower frequency of self-awareness, because again, 
us studying the universe and, and all these conspiracies and these doctrines and these philosophies, we're simply looking for ourselves. So we can only become as aware of what we're studying with as aware we, of what we are within ourselves. So I can only know something as much as I am aware of myself. So if I think of myself as just a human, a human in this body having this experience and this is all I am and nothing but then I'm automatically limited in my potential and my frequency will be very low in what I am identifying as and, and my self-awareness will be minuscule because I'm telling myself I am just this physical image, nothing else, nothing but. So the all-seeing eye is what I used as an example. Someone who's on a, a, a lower frequency, a more beginning frequency will see the all-seeing eye and they'll instantly associate it with the Freemasons, the sa Satanists, um, demonic forces. I mean, whatever you, you call it, whatever you would like to, to name it, right? The, the bottom line is you see the symbols, you instantly disengage. You instantly say, nope, that's not the answer. That's wrong. That's evil. That's bad. That's whatever. And there's two reasons for this. One is because that threatens your current illusion which you are living through and you are making beyond real. And two is because, again, your self-awareness does not match the frequency of the all-seeing eye. So therefore, you can only become as aware of the all-seeing eye as you are aware of yourself. So somebody who, like me, a little higher in awareness... I'm going to see the all-seeing eye, and I'm not going to instantaneously give this power to something outside of me and say, oh, well, that's the Freemasons, that's evil, that's satanic. No. All is one. All is from one. So we are all one thing, one energy, one consciousness. But we will never appear as one thing. And that is the very purpose in life, the illusion of separation. And that's why I say there is a great conspiracy with, between what we call you and I, you and me, self and other. And the more you narrow it down, the more you will realize you and me are only separate through the very mind. It's the same thing with here and there. There is no physical here and there. There is no past or future. And that's the, that's the secret. Every day is the same other than what you physically do in a day every day is the same you want to know why because all is now and now is no time at all every day is the same because we're in the void we've never left the void it just feels as if we're traveling from here to there one place to another because they appear separate, and this is how we have an individual experience as the one through one individual, but an infinite amount. So this is why when we all talk about ourselves, us, we use two words, either the word I or self. I and self. And we all use this singular word, of I or self when we're talking about us, the I. Not you, that's outside of me, but when we're referring to the one speaking, me, I. I am I or self. Just as when you would talk, you would say the very same term. You would say the words I or self. You would not say me or you. Because the truth is, beyond the illusion, beyond the veil, beyond the dream, we're all connected as this one self, as the I. And wherever the I goes, you go. You are the conscious observer projecting the entirety. 
So wherever the eye goes, you go. There is no land beyond the eye. And that that's a quote that used to stick into my skin like a splinter almost. Because I wanted to understand what that meant. Because Alice in Wonderland is one of my favorite movies. The, the 1950s version. I think it's 1951 is when it came out. But the cartoon version from Disney is my favorite movie of all time. Alice in Wonderland. So we're all this singular self. Now, there's an infinite amount of frequencies or dimensions that, that we will experience through what we're calling the self or I. But here's, here's my message is nobody is right or wrong because, again, right and wrong is the same thing as you and me and here and there. They don't exist. They appear separate because you have a dual brain. A dual brain split down the middle with two sides. Therefore, you have to... We, we're existent in, in a binary dual state of being. A zero or a one, a left or a right. And that's why there's me and you, and that's why we arrive here to make it there. Because when you arrive here to make it there, you will realize that here and there are not separate. They are the very same place. And this is why I say all is now. There is no such thing as time. We as humans have given the phenomenon happening right now the idea that we are moving forward. But the truth of the matter is, if here and there are the same place, we would not know the difference if we were alive or dead. If we were living out this dream forward or backward. If you fast forwarded it or rewound it, we wouldn't know the difference if we were speaking and acting out this in a backwards motion or a forward motion because the truth of the matter is we're not going backward and we're not going forward all is now and all is happening now so now let me speak about time time hold on to your seat for this one time has been said not to exist here's my theory on it we're all a part of this great mind of consciousness, and a mind has no physical place, no structure, no anything. It is everything and nothing. Therefore, it is nowhere. You can't pinpoint it on a map and say it is here. It's physically nowhere, and that's the greatest kept secret. The body, the mind doesn't live in the body. The body lives in the mind, so we are existent in the mind. We've taken this phenomenon by studying it and, and we've, we've made this record, which we've called time, to keep track of what we have done, where we have been, what we have found, what we haven't found, etc., etc., etc. Think about it like this. What's the point of a memory card? Why do you use a memory card in a game? Or in your phone? Or in your computer? What's the purpose of a memory card? What if I told you time was no different than memory? Time is memory. It's a record of the singularity experiencing itself. If we're existing inside of a game or a computer, whatever have you, then there's files inside the mind. Some people are familiar with the Akashic Records. Well, my belief is that there's a record in this mind under the name time, and we have named this time. But time is not something that is happening. Time is something that we are recording into a record. 
This is how we distinguish and separate infinity, everything and nothing, into an order. Because if every day is the same and there is no difference in the day other than what we're physically doing, which means we're not really traveling anywhere outside of the void. It appears we're traveling everywhere outside of this void. But if everything and nothing is happening now, there is no past or future. We've never left the void. It just appears we have. We're not physically traveling anywhere. And that's the same way light works. Nikola Tesla said everything is the light. Well, if everything is the light, light acts as a circuit, which means it begins and ends in the same place because we will begin and end in the same place. Remember, here and there are the same place. So we have to begin here to arrive there to bite our own tail and realize we've never left this point. And that's where you bite your own tail. Now, back to the self. What I've said is, if we're all one person, obviously appearing separate, acting separate, thinking separate, appearing separate, obviously we're not going to, at face value, you know, at the, on the surface, we're not going to know we're the same thing. But this is where I say, we always refer to what we are, our grounding place, our home, is always I or self. Because we are the I and the self. The only difference is, is some people are only self-aware to certain points. And that's why I've said there's an infinite amount of dimensions or frequencies for you to become aware of. So, for instance, if you're on this frequency, then you may be studying government conspiracies, the Freemasons, you know, the flaws in your religion, things like this. You're starting to begin to question your reality. Whereas the people who are on this frequency up here have made it beyond this and answered the questions all in between. But here's the thing. This person's not any better than the one down here because, again, we're all the same person. We're all one. We're all I. This also means no one is right or wrong. Right or wrong are the same thing, and they are both true because they are both happening now and being lived, lived out and experienced through the very I. Therefore, it cannot be wrong or right. To you, remember, you are an, a, a hundred percent different self. That's why we have the dual brain that creates the separateness of you and me. But when we're referring to the self, we are all the same person, the same thing. Only, we're only identifying with our level of self-awareness. And I don't think I'm explaining this right, but I'm really trying to. I'm really trying to. We can only understand things to the level of our own self-awareness. And this is why when we begin, begin to change and make changes within ourselves, we will notice we start losing friends, losing family, um... Things around you start changing. The way people start behaving toward you changes. Everything outside of you changes. And because you are the very game changer, you are the projection, the focal point, there is no land beyond the I because the, the I and the outside and inside are one and the same. The I is that median which distinguishes and separates the, the inside and outside so that we can have any experience at all. We are the I. We are in the center. And we're only appearing on one side or the other, which is obviously the inside. I'm appearing on the inside of my body to experience the outside. But the truth of the matter is, when you open your third eye, you realize you're not inside or outside because the two are one and the same. And this is why the earth has no physical shape. So for the people who want to think the earth is round and we live inside the earth in a round ball, you are right. The people who think we live out outside the ball, 
just as we were taught. You are right, because inside and outside do not make a difference. You wouldn't know if you were inside or outside. You wouldn't know if you were alive or dead. It's only a difference in the vocal word you're giving it, the definition you are giving something. You're labeling something this. I could label this experience right here death. This could be death instead of life. What we're calling life could simply be death. You switch the two words around, it makes no difference at all because the two are one always. So there's an infinite amount of layers to each of us. And through each, and this is why I tell people, I get this question all the time. Tyler, do you, do you feel the shift happening? Tyler, do you feel this intense energy? Tyler, do you feel this happening? And I always answer with, no, I do not. You know why? Because you are the shift. You are the revolution. You are what's making everything change for yourself. You change your inside, it changes your outside experience every time. There's many people that may say we can all collectively shift as one thing, which I personally do not agree with. This is not a, a collective experience here. We're not all one thing here. So... I want people to listen to what I say. All is one thing, yet never appearing as one thing. So this here is not the place for oneness. This is the place for separate separation, to get lost. We're all manifesting our creator here. Before you knew you were God, what you call God, you had an idea, a picture, an image, an energy in your mind of what this God was or what it should be, what it could be, how it could be. Well, once you open your third eye, you are no longer that blind person thinking this is how it could be, this is how it should be. You are now the awakened person that is manifesting this creator through himself, through your temporary physical image. This can be temporary, that's fine, because this is not what I am. But while I am in this skin, I will bring out this energy, this infinite energy, here and now. This is why I speak. This is what my channel is for. If I cannot bring my DMT experiences, or, or have people come with me on my DMT experiences, then I will bring them to you here. If I can't bring you the void... And, and, and show you what infinity actually looks like, then I'm going to bring it here. I will manifest it here. I will speak it here. And as I've said in all my videos, as long as we're speaking and trying to give a, an illustration of what it is, it's not actually what is. But again, there goes the purpose. I am the purpose. I am the meaning. The purpose and the meaning are in the question of what is the purpose and what is the meaning. You have the ability to ask the question, what is the purpose, what is the meaning, because the one asking the question is the purpose, is the meaning. That's why you ask. Same with history. Why do you want to know history? Why do you care about history? If this is all you are, the history is irrelevant. It does not matter. But do you know why we care so much about history? Because as I said previously, time is a record. Time is not physical. It does not exist. It is a record which we are uploading our individual experiences of I into. It's the same thing as a video game. You can't, you can't continue on the video game forever unless you save your progress. Well, by me speaking myself into this record of time, I am saving my progress. Tyler will never die because I exist in the record. 
Alan Watts is dead and gone, yet I can pull him up and listen to his voice and his messages right now. Because he exists in the memory, the record of time. And this is why we care so much about time, history. This is your story. There aren't any ancestors. They were you. In the same way you're, you're birthing out now for the first time. The same way it feels like the brand new first time for you here and now is how it felt the last time. And the last time. And the last time. This is the truth about history. His story belongs to the collective consciousness. Your story. Time is a record. This is how we save our individual experience, our individual progress. Right? The game is, is dead and gone when you run out of lives, right? Well, when I run out of lives, I'm dead and gone, right? I'm, or at least here, physically. So Tyler will no longer speak someday on this earth, right? That's, that's, so how can I avoid that to where I can no longer speak again? Well, it's very simple. I upload my voice, my identity, my presence into the record of time. That way, when Tyler's dead and gone, people will listen to him. Maybe. Maybe. The option's there, right? And it's the same with Alan Watts. I've said this before. You listening to Alan Watts right now, you listening to Terrence McKenna right now, <laughs> most people don't get the connection. These men were you. Again, we're thinking of them as something outside of us, other than. But when you open your third eye and you are ready to experience the infinite of just oneness, you will realize the inevitability that there simply are no others. And that your entire awakening has been you prolonging yourself, keeping you in these stages of awakening which basically is giving your power to something outside of you. You're studying conspiracies, you're studying government, you're studying everything but self because you're trying to f figure out who outside of you has this power. Who is it that is enslaving the mass of people? Who is responsible for all the decay and destruction? And it's bittersweet when you find out there are no others. Wow. That means a few things. That means I'm responsible for the decay and destruction. That means I've had the power this whole time. That means I'm doing everything to myself. And that means I am that I am. The most powerful realization of all. There's nothing outside of me that has power over me, over I. In fact, I am my worst, own worst enemy. Why? Because I was getting in my own way. And all of us do. All of us get in our own ways. It's a hard realization to make. And it's a very bittersweet realization when you actually explore solipsism because you will eventually realize it is inevitable. You can prolong it. You can put it off for as long as you want. But eventually, you will have to part ways with your physical body and reveal to yourself that th why this is not what I am. And then you will realize you never had to hang on to this body because you are already this and so much more. This is just a host to everything you actually are. But you just want to be this instead of all this. And most people who become all this get swallowed in the idea of solipsism and loneliness and sadness and, and depression because some people feel, well, it's sad. It's all me. It's only me. It's just me and just me here and it's, it's scary and... Results may vary, 
But everyone goes through it, I would say, to some degree. Feeling depressed, scared, sad, anxious, um, nervous. Or also feeling like, I wish I never opened my third eye. Why did I do that? I wish I never did. But the truth of the matter is, for those who have opened the third eye, you have to ask yourself, who I was before I opened my third eye? Would they have stopped until they reached this realization? Because I can answer that, and I would tell you 100%, I would not have stopped. I would still be searching and seeking and driving myself insane. And for, for those who get in their own way a little too much and can't, simply cannot put aside their egos... And let me clarify this terminology. When I say the word ego, our ego is our our boundary of what we think we are. So some people think they're just a body. Well, then that's your ego because that's your boundary. And if you can't think outside of your ego, well, you're you're stuck in your own box. That's where think outside the box comes from because you are creating your own limit, your own boundary for your limitlessness and your your infinite potential. So for the people who get in their own way and can't put aside the ego, which is their mental boundary, some people turn to psychedelics to simply keep them from getting in their own way. So there's an assistance in this, in letting go. Because some people simply can't. And I was one of those people. I could not make the connection with myself because I refused to admit to myself, I am not Tyler. I was not having it. I would not admit it to myself. I would not get out of my own way. So I continuously kept saying, all is one, but I am still Tyler. And I'm beating myself to death trying to figure out, how can I be one, but still be Tyler always? How does this work? And I realized eventually it doesn't work. And that's when I went into psychedelics. I'm going to explain this 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 death experience just uh, slightly for you. I hope everyone has seen the movie Fight Club with Brad Pitt and um, I forget the other guy's name. Hopefully everyone's seen the movie Fight Club on here. I think his name's Edward Norton. That's his name. Edward Norton and uh, Brad Pitt. But if you've seen Fight Club, then I just want to say this movie was almost identical to my first near-death experience. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Fight Club, I'll give you a brief, a brief, uh, summarize, summarizing, uh, summarization, I don't know. I'll just summarize it for you real quick. So, I forget the main character's name, but his, his illusory character is Tyler Durden. It's a made-up person, but in the movie... They don't reveal to you that he's made up at all. So he's a physical person, he's real, he's he's traveling with this guy from place to place and they're living, you know, together. Okay? So during my psychedelic trip, when I experienced death, cuz I couldn't stop myself from getting in my own way. I couldn't stop myself. I was just getting in my own way. I needed the assistance. So when I exited my body, I was brought through this funnel, this funnel-like thing, and I was long gone from my body, so I was just thinking I, I had died and that was it. I was never going to return to who I thought I was and that, wow, I, this was showing me I truly know nothing at all. So I was taken through this tunnel, and this tunnel basically opened up to this right here, and this is what... Not this exact design and color, but I'm using it just as illustration purposes, so please bear with me. But just to give you a visual here, this came through the tunnel, so the tunnel's coming at me, and then it comes into my focal point like that. I go through the tunnel, through it, and then this is slowly coming through on the other side. This is coming through the tunnel, and it's getting closer and closer and closer. 
And then this is all changing and shifting and moving too, but I'm just going in this hole. In, 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 in. And so the whole time that I'm going through this space, this void, I shouldn't even say space, that is a void of nothingness. In this place, time does not exist. So you have no concept of, of how long you're staring at this for. You have no idea how long you're here for. It feels like eternity. But when you go into this, you are getting a first glimpse at what eternity feels like, looks like, and is. Forever. So basically the voice was telling me, and this started going a little slower, a little slower, slowed down. It started telling me. There was a voice talking to me, and the voice did not sound like Tyler, like the voice you're hearing now. Okay? So I did not associate the voice as myself. But it was telling me, come a little, come a little deeper. Just come, come a little deeper. Come a little further. So I'd go a little further in, and nothing would change. It would still be the same. I mean, it was constantly moving, but it wouldn't change, if you get what I'm saying. It still stayed the same. I'm in the same freaking place, and I'm panicking at this point because I'm, I'm not getting what the hell's going on. But it's just telling me. It's trying to comfort me. Everything you seek is here. Just come a little further. Come a little further. Everything's going to be revealed to you. Come further. Everything's going to be revealed to you. You're going to know everything. You want to know God? Come a little further. This voice was very persistently talking to me. Now, I'm going to go back to the movie Fight Club. The movie Fight Club, when Edward Norton goes to sleep, he's feeling dizzy, and he starts to lay down. And Brad Pitt starts putting on his jacket, and it's all fuzzy, and he can barely see what is going on. But he's laying down, and all he sees is blurriness. And what you can make out of the blurriness is Brad Pitt is putting his jacket on, and he is he's getting ready to leave the door and shut the door behind him and say, See you later. So, this voice brought me into this eternal abyss of nothingness. It led me into it. So I'm thinking the entire time, I, I don't know where I'm at, but I'm not alone. At least I'm not alone. There's something here to comfort me. There's something here, there's someone here to comfort me. There's a voice talking to me. So after this voice talked to me, and I couldn't tell you how long it was, because again, time does not exist here. If I had to estimate, it felt like hours, hours of insanity going through this. And finally, after it, it, it kept saying, are you ready to know what God is? Are you ready to know what God is? Are you ready to know? I said, yes, 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 I want to know, yes. I was so excited, so eager. And it's, it asked me one more time in a different way. It asked me one more time. Instead of, are you ready to know what God is? It says, are you ready? And so here I am saying, yes, yes, I'm ready. Please show me. Please show me. Silence. While you're in this. So imagine this. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Yes. Yes, I'm ready to know what God is. Show me. And imagine being stuck in this for what felt like hours alone. That voice that was talking to me never came back. Not in any one of my trips has that voice come back. Because what that voice was showing me. Are you ready to know what God is? Are you ready to know? Are you sure you're ready? Yes. This is me answering. Yes, I'm ready. The voice disappeared after that question forever. I've never heard it again. After the question of, are you ready? It's disappeared, left me, and I've never heard it again. Because it's the very same thing in the movie Fight Club. When you're laying down and going to sleep and you're seeing Tyler Durden put on the jacket and saying, see you later, dude. I'm fucking out of here. I'm later. Goodbye. You wake up and you realize 
That person didn't fucking exist. That voice wasn't there. It was me. It was me the whole time. And this is the most powerful breakthrough and experience I've ever had on DMT. Mind you, mind you, it cost me everything. It cost me everything. And that's why I tell people, there's a price to pay for piercing the veil, seeing beyond yourself, and entering the void. There's a price to pay, but it, it comes with all your illusions, all of them, being dissolved and killed and turned to freaking dust. Because through these illusions is your identity. This identity. Our whole identity is made up through smoke and mirrors, illusions. And this is why I posted the status about we don't experience death all at once. We experience it slowly by having one piece of our illusion picked away at a time. And after your illusion is picked apart, you are left to scramble for the self that you thought you were. Just as I was left scrambling for myself in the freaking void of abyss. I was scrambling for myself in this. And that's when I had to realize I am not this. I'm trying to be this when I'm all this. I'm trying to cling on to this when I'm everything. So let me clarify too what I mean when I say I lost everything, okay? When you go into the void, like I said, you live through illusions. So you have, and these illusions are crutches for you. They're crutches. When you're going into a psychedelic trip, you don't want crutches. The purpose is to kick out every crutch that you have and use, which is keeping you from, from your answer. It's what's getting you in your own way, your illusions, your persistent illusions which will keep you in denial. If anyone's on here and this message resonates with you, please share this video for me. Just, just help me share it. I'm still blocked from groups because People report my stuff, and, and I get blocked from sharing my content into groups. So if you don't mind sharing this live video with some of your friends and, 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 and groups or something, I'd appreciate that so much. Just to help me get some more viewers on here. but But this is why I say we're all the self. But we're all the self on different degrees, different dimensions. Mm -hmm. So this is crucial to know because you'll no longer become hostile or angry when others don't see things your way. When others don't agree with your philosophy. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm not right, and they're not wrong, and they're not right, and I'm not wrong. It's simply an experience which is being lived out, manifested, and created. Creation cannot be right or wrong. It is. It simply is, and that's why I am that I am. I'm not right or wrong, I just am. All of us are. You too. So you don't need other people to... Confirm your beliefs to confirm your philosophies or to even resonate with them. We're all right. No one's wrong. Because we're all the infinite I.
my purpose here cuz listen i've i've done dmt so many times and i've experienced this so many times i'm so far past the point of no return i'm so far beyond i've already lost everything and that's that's actually what i got sidetracked with i want to go back to that thought real quick i was explaining how i lost everything and i got sidetracked into another thought so i apologize about that but i just want to clarify some of these things for people who may have questions for the video or what i'm saying but what i mean by i lost everything is i didn't just lose a part of me half of me i lost every delicate piece to my illusion which as i said your whole identity are a bunch of pieces which is an illusion and when you experience death you have one piece taken away at a time to leave you scrambling for what you thought you were so i didn't lose myself right away i didn't just exit my body and and go away and and become enlightened no i had to shed my attachment to myself meaning my illusions my wishes my wants my phony beliefs my illusions and then i had to part ways and accept the realization of family because remember you're trying to go from a human brain or a, a, a person to the infinite mind of what you're calling god the infinite energy the most powerful thing in the in the freaking universe So when you're transitioning from this small mind into the everything you start losing connection with some of the pieces to your own illusion. So the next thing that was was going for me was my family. My family. And this is why I say I've lost everything. Everything. There's a price to pay. for piercing the veil and going into the point of no return. I had to mourn the loss. Absolutely, I was in tears, crying, yelling. It's a part of the experience. But I had to cry and mourn the loss of my entire family. Not just one person, not just two people. Every single person in my family i had to mourn all at one time i had to lose i had to accept they're dead they're gone and after that after that came myself after they went i had no concept of love no emotion i didn't know emotion because you're entering the void you have no emotion you don't know love and the reason is is not because it's not there it does not exist but because when you fill the void the space of one because remember if all is one and one is all when you fill this space nothing is separate so you can only love someone if they are separate from you but when i am here you and me are right here too we're not separate so there's nothing to love i have to be separate from you to love you so it's not that love doesn't exist here but everything is connected here and does not appear separate so i cannot love something which is not separate from me there is no concept of self awareness here Everything that we know and have here does not exist here. And that is the ultimate price you pay. And this is why some people lose their minds after doing psychedelics. They get so far away from what we call reality. They let the infinite amount of possibilities and and stuff drive them to the brink of insanity. Because remember, genius and insanity are the same things. The genius is always insane in his thinking habits and his in his habits and his ways. The genius is insane, absolutely. There is a price to pay. And it's a question of 
Can you get out of your own way? And are you willing to pay this price? Because the hardest thing is letting go. Once you've let go, what happens when you jump off a building? You've let go. There's, you're at the point of no return. You have to sit there and live out your fate of what's going to happen. Well, when you let go, there's nothing else holding you back. There's nothing else to keep you from yourself. Until you hit rock bottom. Just like in Fight Club. Hit rock bottom. Make the realization. And now I'm going to answer the question. There is a price to pay. Is that price worth it? And the answer is, would I be here speaking happy, consciously, constructively, if it wasn't? The answer is, you have to lose everything to realize it's not separate. You have to experience the end of everything you think was separate from you so you can realize it was never separate to begin with. So me mourning the loss of my family and myself and this and that was me having to accept the fact that I am not just Tyler this body. And I am not Tyler trying to connect with God. I am God denying my own power and my own self through Tyler. See, and that's one of my favorite things from Alan Watts, is even he says, you know, even the people who are in denial and who are pretending they're not God, they still are God. The only difference is, is they're putting on the most magnificent and entertaining display that they're not. And to the people who have their third eyes open, like me, it's the most entertaining thing you can watch. Doesn't mean you interject with them, doesn't mean you... You run your philosophy and your, your knowledge into them. I don't push myself on people. But it is the most entertaining thing to see someone persistently deny themselves. And I've talked about this in, a, in my other video about you, you are your own guru. This is the great secret that is kept between the student and the guru. People think this that the gurus know this great knowledge and this great this great stuff. and No, the guru is just trying to get you to get out of your own way so that you can stop pretending you're not what you want to be. The guru is going to persistently hold up every mirror for you which you deny yourself until you make the realization you are your own guru. There is no difference. The only difference is he realizes he's it. He is the, this power. Therefore, a guru doesn't need to seek out a guru. A, a student seeks out a guru because they are seeking for the secret, for the answer. But once you have the answer, you have the secret, you pass it on. You keep it going. Spread the light. And that's why religions are keeping people stuck, because they're, it's a business. They keep you coming back, they keep you vulnerable. They're not showing you that you are the power, and then keeping you from coming back, because a guru shows you the answer and then disappears. Just like how I said in Fight Club, when Tyler Durden takes his, puts his jacket on, walks out the door and says, See you later, dude. Same thing with my psychedelic trip. I had this voice guiding me all the way through, it asked me if I was ready and then disappeared after I said yes. It went, it was gone. It vanished. Just like the guru is supposed to do. They're supposed to make you realize you are God and then disappear. Disappear. So that way the student is left scrambling in their minds. Oh my God, was that guy even real? Was this guru even real or was it me the whole time? That's the very purpose of a guru. They're supposed to leave you when you're ready. So you realize there was no difference between you and the guru. None. 
The only difference is you were in persistent denial, and he knew otherwise. He held up the mirror for you, which you denied. <laughs> oh, Sean, uh, Sam, Sam, I love you, bro. Thank you. Oh, man. Sam, you're one of my favorite people, man. Thank you. Thanks for all your support and just being here, bro. So as I said in, in, in my cover photo... I posted like two, three days ago. My purpose and ambition here is not to push my mind to its limits. I'm here to push it to explore its limitlessness, which very few people can do and very few people want to do. Because some people will say, oh, it pushes you so far from reality or it gets you so lost in insanity or this or that and... To each his own, everyone's different. Again, everyone's their own self, but I love pushing myself to explore our limitlessness. But I also feel like once you've opened your third eye and you've made a greater realization and you've reached the point of no return, you also somewhat have a responsibility. And I'm not saying you have to Make videos and speak to everyone and teach everyone enlightenment. But you are now carrying the torch of this knowledge. So whether you're teaching it or living it, one way or another, you have a responsibility. Or hell, do both. Teach it and live it. And you'll never be perfect. Just, just remember that. Even Alan Watts says that. Just because you have this knowledge does not mean you won't have human experiences, does not mean you will not slip up into the ego, does not mean you won't feel depressed, does not mean you won't feel angry, does not mean you won't be an emotional wreck. It just means you have a greater awareness and, and construct of everything around you. I mean, you're that much more prepared. And it also means that at any time, sure, we can get lost in ego and it's good to feel the emotion, but it also means that at any time we can choose to stop playing the victim role because deep down in our minds we already know we're not the lower conscious victim, we are the higher conscious creator. But as I said, every once in a while, absolutely, we want to dip into that lower conscious ego and have a human experience. Absolutely. Me as well. Absolutely. I'll cry. I'll be depressed. I'll laugh. I'll be sad. I'll, I'll get angry. It's part of the experience. But it, again, it just means I am now better equipped on how to handle, heal, fix anything that occurs. So I'm, my channel is not here to push myself on anybody. I'm simply just sharing my experience. And I'm here as a channel, if you will. I picture myself channeling the infinite void and its message through me and my experience of it. So, and as I said... If I can't bring all of you with me on my DMT trips, well, I will try my damnedest to bring the DMT trip to you. I will try my hardest to put it into words. I will try my hardest to, to allow you to make the same connection and realization I had.
but without having to physically embody this, because let me tell you, and even Terence McKenna, a DMT master, <laughs> has said, there's not one time you will go into this place of, of void and not be scared shitless. And that's coming from Terence McKenna himself. That's a direct quote. Not one time has he gone to the other side and not been scared shitless because this is not for everybody. It's not for the faint heart. And it can be everything you're looking for, but it also can drive you to the points of insanity. So while I encourage psychedelics, I also have a huge caution on them because I don't want somebody to lose their mind and then say, well, Tyler said psychedelics were amazing and they, everything I wanted were, you know, in psychedelics. Well, results will vary. But you have to, to know whether you can handle it, whether you're ready. I shouldn't really say handle it because you don't handle jack sh shit. You get your head hit by a train. <laughs> But it's just, it's more, it's more of if you are ready and willing to let go. That's really all you have to do. Are you, have you driven yourself to the brink of insanity enough of looking for or seeking what you're looking for and not finding it? Are you still getting in your own way? Well, then maybe psychedelics is for you. If you can let go. Realize you're not making your answer. You're not getting your answer. So you should probably let go and let the medicine show you what you are avoiding, what you are refusing to look at. Because subconsciously, we all know the answer to our greatest fears. But it's, it's coded or clouded through that fear. So the fear is what keeps us from going beyond that surface. Because beyond that surface, you will experience everything you search for. Everything. But again, always a price to pay. Always a price to pay. Just remember that. And that's why letting go is the greatest and easiest thing you can do. Simply letting go. Realizing you have no reason to hang on because, well, for one, there's absolutely nothing to hang on to. And for two, the tighter you hang on, the less it's yours. Put that together. Those who have actually let go have realized this is all already me. It's all me. I don't have to cling on. I don't have to hold on. I don't have to identify and, and freak out. No. I am that I am. It's all me. So as I said, just seeing beyond the veil is basically seeing beyond our egos, which our egos is our created illusory boundary for ourselves. So as I've said, you can only become as conscious as you are self-aware. So if you are only self -aware, as self-aware of yourself or what you're calling self as I am a human, well then you're just a human. If you're self-aware as just enough to I'm just a spirit, then that's all you'll be aware up to. If you're aware of I am an alien, or whatever you want to call as an alien, that is the boundary you're creating for yourself, and that is the limit of self which you will be able to identify as and comprehend through knowledge. And like I said, I like using the third eye as the most common example because it's a symbol. It's, it has no words to it. So in other words, a symbol can be interpreted as anything you want it to be. You can have a hundred people look at a symbol and every one of them will, will tell you a different meaning behind the symbol. Because it's just that. You make the definition of it. It's a sound expression. You decide what it means. But that's why I say... 
You can only comprehend something to the level of your self-awareness. So if I am only self-aware of myself up to the point of a human, a spirit, an alien, an angel, etc., etc., these are all boundaries. So therefore, I will only be able to comprehend the all-seeing eye up to my level of self-awareness. So up to the point of a human, an alien, a god, an angel. But when you look at that and, and see singularity, infinity, everything, and you have a higher level of self-awareness, which you have broken through these other boundaries, you will see this and realize this is everything and nothing. It doesn't actually have a name. It, it is not... And remember, when I say it, I'm, I, I'm talking about you. I, the singular I. It is you. So, it is everything and nothing. You can give it the label, a human, an alien, a god, an angel, but what this instantly does is creates a limit or a boundary for yourself. And But the thing is, is you cannot become aware of that boundary until you catch what it is you're looking for. And once you catch what it is you're looking for, you will realize it was all you the whole time. So if you think aliens are real, well, you're absolutely right they're real. And they will become as real as you make them until you bite your own tail and realize they are you. They're not separate from you. Artificial intelligence, the same thing. It is you. The very same... I've said this before. There is the very same intelligence behind all creation. And very few can put that together for what I'm saying. But really think about that. There is the same intelligence behind all creation. That means once you reach this level of intelligence, you are the creator. Look at the human race. We have reached the intelligence of creation. So what are we doing? We are creating things. And then those things which we create are going to create things. And the things they create are going to create things. And now we're understanding infinity here. What we create is not separate from us. It is just as much I as I am it. Therefore, this is me and I am it. And we are this singular self constantly changing and moving but always staying the same thing, if you know what I mean. Because it's always consciousness, it's always the one consciousness appearing as something separate, appearing as something different, thinking as something different, acting as something different. That's the point. And each incarnation is going to feel the very same as this one does. Why do you think the next one will be any different? The very same way you came out of nothingness. To ask the fundamental and quintessential, quintessential questions of who am I, what am I, where am I, how am I, are the very same questions you better believe you're going to ask again your next incarnation. And it's going to feel the very same as it does now. Who am I? What am I? How am I? Why am I? And you will study outside, inside. You will study the universe, the stuff around you, the people around you. You will study again. You'll look into history. See what's, what's, what's happened. with the. At this point, you don't know it's you. So instead of what's happened with you in history, you're looking for ancestors, others. What's happened with the human race. But the truth of the matter is, History is our record to our singular consciousness. That's why we birth out asking questions, self-analyzing, studying. Because we are aware, but we can only comprehend what matches to our level of self-awareness. So really take that in. You're watching a news story online. 
or let's just say you've got your family in the room and a news story pops up, all of you are going to identify with that news story in a different way. Some of you may think it's a conspiracy. Some of you may think it's fake news. Some of you may think it's a real deal. Some of you may think it's just bull, bull crap. The bottom line is you're all correct. You're all right. But you're all self-aware on different levels. Therefore, none of you are taking in and comprehending the very same thing. So this is why I, some people get so frustrated. I mean, how can you not see it this way? How can you not see it this way or that way? I presented all the facts and this and that. Well, if someone is not at the same level of awareness as you, or on the same frequency as some people like to say, of course they're not going to understand it. They're not as self-aware to that point. You have to break your boundaries outside of yourself. You have to break these illusory boundaries to deeper get to know yourself. That's why it is a journey of self-discovery. You are discovering yourself one layer at a time, one piece at a time, one dimension at a time. And the more you comprehend, the more conscious you become, which is the more self-aware you become. And the more self-aware you become, the more information you can take in and analyze. Isn't that a part of the whole experience? To be more conscious? To be more aware? Well, if I want to take in more information, in other words, be smarter... I have to become more self-aware of what I call the self. I will only comprehend quantum physics, um, NASA, the government, conspiracies, anything. I will only comprehend them to the level of my own self-awareness. And that's that. Can't put it any other way. And that is why when we make changes within ourselves, the outside world begins to change. People begin to change with us because we are the very change we want to see. We are the self. We are the I. We are what's, what's driving everything. We're manifesting this, all of us, individually. And this video, I feel, has been a good conclusion or, or summary of solipsism and infinity and psychedelics. I'm going to wrap up this video. It's going to be on my YouTube channel, Red Pill Rabbit Hole. Subscribe if you haven't yet or if this resonates with you. That's, that's awesome. Um... Thank you to everyone who has shared this video. I am, I am very, very, very grateful. I'm still blocked from sharing into groups, so I can't share anywhere but my own pages and the groups that I do manage, which is like two. So to the people who are sharing my, my content, I am very grateful. You know, I do not ask for donations or anything, but the best thing, honestly, anyone here could do is just share the video. Just get it, get it out. That's, that's the best thing. Oh. But, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thanks for joining me here. And also check out my Facebook page, Order of the Black Wheel Matrix. I have a few things that I post in there every now and then, too. But, everyone have a good weekend. Have a good conscious weekend. I'm going to be probably offline for another week or two again, so... But, just realize I'm always analyzing, I'm always studying, I'm always observant, I'm always aware. And it's kind of good being away for a while because it gives me some time to study and, and come up with some content for a video like this. Because I take all of the people's statuses that I see on my Facebook, all the concerns, all the fears, all the worries, I take all that and I put them right into a video to help kind of alleviate some of this fear and some of this pain and some of this rejection of what we are. And maybe to help clarify as well. 
But let me shut up. I'm going to start talking again on another subject. All right. Subscribe on YouTube. Red Pill Rabbit Hole. Thank you to everyone. Love you infinitely. Thank you, Elizabeth. If, if anyone needs any drawings too, hit up Elizabeth. Elizabeth Heisterman. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Elizabeth drew me this beautiful, beautiful painting or, or drawing by pencil. You can see the, the freaking time and love put into every freaking stroke too. Absolutely beautiful. Freaking perfection. So yeah, if you need any portraits or drawings done, Elizabeth Heisterman is in the comments. Please be... Be sure to add her, message her, and then whatnot. She does flawless work. But everyone have a great weekend, a conscious weekend. If you have any questions on my video today, please feel free to inbox me. And remember, you are not alone, and you are not alone in this journey. Thank you.